泰达正面的是 ADC， 直接交闪现拉开了距离，而且凯南没有办法再碰到他。这时候立刻再加一个进化，但是一个才扑了上来，三下哇！Yes, we're back here with the LPL for week number three. It's gone kind of disco as we introduce you to another awesome week moving forward. And can you believe that we're already at the week three point as we've seen so many epic matchups already and so many upsets to begin the 2019 summer split. And we're now in Chengdu for our opening game. Hello and welcome back again. My name's Jake Asterix, Aussie Penko, joined by another Australian Ooh. man born in Beijing. Hello. Well, not another one, I should say. The only one here Woo. on the desk here for today. Jimmy Preacher is going to be with me. And Jimmy, welcome back to the LPL. I'm excited. Look, I'm happy that I'm over my sickness, but what I'm really happy for here is getting back onto the LPL. Today's matchups are insane. I was going to say, I'm getting sick of not casting because I tell you what, I had it one day off and I just wanted to be there as always. As we get into week number three, let's give you a quick refresher, a quick update on the standings because things have been back and forth so far. And Preacher, I'm talking about where IG is standing, where JDG is standing, after a 0-3 entrance. That is not even by a technicality. Take a look at that. Invictus Gaming in the bottom eight of our league. And yes, we have 16 teams. So that is not in playoffs contention. Obviously early days, but they've got an uphill battle to it's fight. It's such a surprise to see two finalists down there in the bottom eight. You're exactly right. But we look at teams like RNG, FPX, who are on a tear coming into summer. And of course, I talk about RNG because... Three and zero start to the split, Preacher. It's a very good thing. And I also say that because Casa, the jungler, he won our MVP in week number one and number two. What a beautiful man. Take a look at all of those champions that he's got at his disposal. Heavy AD, heavy early game, heavy ganking, and he has definitely made the entire team work. They switched it up with the roster change. They also changed the playstyle. Focus more to the top side. Yep. Cast can do it all. Very good at the meta champions, of course. That's what's appearing in the jungle at the moment in the LPL. And Cast has played the ball so many times before. It just comes naturally to him. Uh, three MVPs. That's why he's picking up our MVP of week one and week two. And that's a new LPL segment there for you. But Preacher, it's the start of a week and we're going to do our first ever Summer let's 2019. Best of the Rift as we jump on in. And Cass is there, of course. Obviously. But let's start with Juno in the top. Lane. Over 10 KDA. This guy has been popping off in all of his games. Kind of makes sense why he's on the list. Yeah, that's right. Remember, he's replacing Ray. So he had big shoes to fill as Clement and Niberia said yesterday. And I'm glad he's filling that. Cass that we're going to have a quick talk about again because this guy is just hitting and charts. Oh, and there's also the early game ganking. Just the fact that he can facilitate new members, it's like they were there all along. And the same early game there with FPX. Doombi hits up the mid lane here for Best of the Rift. Four games, four wins, and four champions as well. He's going for his and previous five roster. five solo kills, Preacher. It's been two weeks. This and guy's he's got insane. five solo kills. Yeah, he really is. So, uh, sitting first in that chart, naturally. The bottom lane, we look at very different elements there. Surprised to see SMLZ it's in the 80 character. It's a surprise because he's not really focused on in team fights. He's left to his own devices. Sometimes it's Feast, sometimes it's Famine. First two weeks, definitely did well. Especially, I, wanna, I just want to stay on SMLZ for a second because the way Sooning were coming into this split with expectations of falling even further behind 
behind, losing Xiao Ao, the interchange between Weiwei and Hacker constantly. But SMLZ has risen to the occasion. 42% damage after five games, not half bad. Yeah, 42% really does indicate the fact that he's living long in the middle of these team fights. Nobody protecting him. He's doing that for himself. As Raz would say, living his best life. And uh, we go to the support. It's LNG's Duan, previously known as Caveman. First time in a long while we've seen a Vici Gamer laner or X. Feature game Atlanta in that position. Yeah, of course. Changing up the uh, changing up the team and also changing up the player as well. A new rebrand from both of those two. And Duan looks massive as before. It's mainly coming out of his warding and also denying it from the enemy. His lane is safe all throughout the lane. I'm defense. super excited to see Duan up there. LNG, of course, if you didn't tune in and you missed that one out. Defeated IG 2-0. So, of course, you have hot. to put him up there. Yeah, Hot is a good way to put it. So, uh, good vision control, as you mentioned there just before. For Duan... Great to see him in that position and expecting bigger things coming out of LNG. And that's our best of the rift to start off the Summer Split Preacher for our second week. And as we go forward, you have to remember that for teams like LNG, they'll be starting to fear some of the teams playing today because we start with OMG, BLG, but... IGV5 coming up later. Yeah, and usually people will say that this is a kind of joke. Why are we watching the former world champions take on V5, a team that hasn't done too well at, at the very least in spring? Mm -hmm. However, this is literally the best chance that V5 have ever had to defeat IG. They are coming up to IG, who lost this series against, against LNG, like you said, and also against uh, Dominus Gaming. Yeah. Didn't look too hot. Yeah, no, it went to all three games. So IGV5 coming up later. That was essentially meant to be the first versus the 16th. Not anymore. So that spices up, but our first one gets even hotter in the cooker. Here we go. OMG, BLG, Preacher. And for OMG, this is our first chance to introduce to the English audience what is happening with this team and why there is so much hype built around them. Take a look at the rosters that we have on your screen right now. The man, the myth, the legend, Curse in the top lane. Look, he's already debuted, but this is his first debut on the English broadcast. Yep. We need to keep our minds on him. Crystal is also in for ADC, and Hudia is, oh, well, I think that you have a little nickname for this team, don't you? Yeah, no, I call this Snake Light. Now, the reason is because you remember in the past, Guo Guo, Crystal, Hudia, all on the same team together. And even Crystal and Hudia, they've been a duo before. And coming into this team, I'm excited to see what the dynamic is going forward, even though there's not that much focus on the bottom. Stuff. I mean, especially the champion pickups, but we need to talk about where we're really going to keep our eyes on inside of this uh, matchup, Go and that it. is going to be on the top side of the map. We yep. don't need to talk too much about Icon. He hasn't changed. He's still the star player of the team. Always plays these wacky champions. Mm. I mean, last split, he played a lot of the Vayne mid. This split is a lot of yeah. the Renekton mid as well. It's always going to be entertaining in his camp. Two games already. I know, yeah. It's pretty exciting. However, we also need to talk about Curse when we talk about the top side of the map because this star new player played a little bit in the LDL for all of you uh, watching at home who don't really focus on the LDL. Uh, let's talk about his uh, debut into the LPL first, mm -hmm. though. However, Irelia, Camille, Jace, there is a trend and that trend is true. It's all damage. Now, remember that the damage percentage there is so relevant because it's a carry matchup as you just pointed out there but for curse only one series so far against we omg have only played that single series themselves so it's good to see the champion diversity and that he's playing these flex champions and that's why now for omg it feels like almost a new identity because they're a team that their solo lanes have so much strength in and it's really just their raw mechanical outplays. We're watching one right now where it's pretty much his patience onto post as well. you got to watch out for his flash to dodge that one out. And also how long he waits to use his Q, gets his passive up, gets his health up from the steel as well. And take a look at that solo kill. Yeah, look, it's not the only solo kill you're going to see in this I nice mean, little montage not. as well. But it came down to the team fightings and the coordination that they'd have with Curse. And you can see Icon and this new top lane are gelling nicely. Take a look at that. He's even the first person to dive. You know how you get rid of turret aggro? By diving even deeper and the rest of the team following him up as well those are clean calls and everybody's on the same page from this play they set themselves up in pretty good conditions now of course with Ale coming out in spring with this roster we had a lot of questions on how this guy would perform but mechanically gifted Boop. is a good way to put it after that first series so we have big expectations coming in this top laner going up against someone like ADD big shoes to fill of Ale who you know rookie central there but they've found another one i don't know omg scouting talents or who it is they do it. but they are finding some good top laners that's the beauty of the lpl we have the ldl so we always have a feeder into our main league Straight. however let's talk about the matchup in the top lane as well because mm. if you remember add you would have said uh scion you would have said uh poppy a whole lot of these takes yep. no take a look at his first series within the lpl this 
split in specific. You've got the Aatrox and you've got the Jax as well. Yeah. Kind of makes sense because Aatrox is so strong right now, but he definitely proved that he can play it and he's not weak on the champion. He's got such a wide champion pool. ADD in spring had so many diversifying picks and it's good to see that these two teams are butting heads so early in the split because it's about the Korean solo liners for BLG. Let's not forget that coming into spring, we said, wow, BLG import in Kuro, uh, previously from Afrika Freaks, and ADD previously from MVP. And, you know, small expectations for the top lane, big expectations for Kuro, but ADD filled that out nicely as we start introducing our teams. And remember, OMG, only their second series so far. So going up against BLG, who have a one-for-one -one record, this is going to test them and see where OMG could finally place. And honestly, if you are not hyped to see OMG play inside of this split, let me tell you, I give this a certification. You definitely need to watch this match because it is going to be a highlight for how they're going to go the rest of the way, especially their raw mechanics they have to build on. They really are. They're introducing the players at the stage right now. Let's go through those lineups as ADD in the top lane. Meteor, who got his name right, folks. He changed it here finally. for summer, so it's no longer... Matoa, you got Kuro, you got Jin Zhao, and their newest member in Shinmo, who we'll talk about as we get closer to the game. But right now for BLG, we mentioned the solo lanes. Well, their bot lane has strengthened as well, so BLG are looking strong coming into summer. Moving it up, the champion pool is what we need to talk about. We'll get into that in Champions League. Right now, I'm just happy that I could buy Meteor Gear. Yeah, you really are. He still doesn't have a name on the back of his jersey, though, Preacher. Unfortunate. So, uh, we're going to have to wait and see how that one comes about. And if they finally do give him another jersey, it's been three weeks, guys. I mean, he kind of deserves it, especially for getting his name right this time. Yeah, he does. Uh, unfortunate accident in spring, but uh, no more Matoa. That's all you need Fat to know. fingers. As we were talking heavily about OMG coming into this. Look at Pretty Man Icon. That's a good-looking dude. Sitting in chair. What Golden an introduction. Chair? Hysterics. Can we get these chairs? I want to sit in those. You want to sit in those chairs? They what? look comfy. Yeah, they definitely do. Uh, they're going through introducing, I'll give you the same treatment, of course. Uh, we got Curse in the top lane, Penguin, who made his debut in spring. Icon in the mid lane, and of course your bottom lane is Crystal and Hoodie for today. And as they approach the stage, OMG are getting the red carpet treatment here in this first match. Kind of makes sense. It is their arena, so everybody is rooting for them. They're the home team coming into the first uh, matchup. And look, I'm just looking forward to seeing how exactly this team gels together. Only seen one from them. Let's see them uh, continue the good pace. Well, what we were just seeing on our screen, Penguin was pushing Curse up into that uh, top-sided seat, but it will be a matchup towards that top lane, reiterating that the mid lane as well. Icon versus Kuro is very hypey. I mean, these guys have so much history uh, both uh, Kuro in LCK, Icon in the LPL. Uh, there were big brands growing, and, and Icon continues to grow towards that. So the mid lane matchup here is just as good as the top, which is why jungle is going to be key. It's the Penguin versus Meteor matchup, and both these junglers, they made their debut in spring, so 2019 is their rookie year. About to say it, 2019 rookies, these guys look so strong, and more importantly, so far, their champion pools don't overlap. Meteor's gone for the very standard meta of Olaf and also the Rek'Sai in his pickups. However, on the other side, Penguin is stuck on Sejuani duty, got a little bit of a lease in there as well, and I want to talk about the fact that From there as well, from the side of Penguin, and uh, last split you would have known him for the the Jiao Xin, uh, uh, Xin Jiao, Jin Jiao. learning Chinese. I'm trying to learn the champions of Chinese as well. As just such good stats already, and the rookie to watch, of course, because he's got three solo kills. Beautiful numbers. Take a look at those nine two seven and also ten five sixteen. I don't see that second row. I don't see it anywhere. My point is, even Teddy from SKT calls this guy the new daddy of top lane Ooh. because he is just dominating so far ahead. Damage per minute, first in the league. Goal difference by fifteen. Dominates his lane. You can see exactly why he was picked up. And also the team fights. He wouldn't have the kill participation if he didn't make those roams and look for the fights. So he's such an aggressive top laner. He's on your screen right now. And Curse coming in, like we said with Arlo, there's good prospects for this man. And this is the best thing about Curse. Usually carry players need a whole lot of attention focused to them. They don't really gank top lane that much. I was watching some of their games in the very first bit, and what they did is he actually rotates down towards the rest of his team, so that is a really good player when a jungler doesn't need to focus on it. Because so far, Penguin has been hovering around mid, hovering around Icon. A lot of river control contested and will be contested here with Meteor and Penguin going at it. So the top side of the map's our real interest, but doesn't mean we won't dabble in Crystal, Hoodye, going up against Jinjiao and Shinmo. And as I said before, Shinmo, 
this is his rookie split. This is the first time coming in over someone like Mini who we saw in spring. Yeah, subbing out from Mini. And also, one thing that we need to highlight from this player is the fact that he is definitely 100% on board the Yumi train. Oh, yeah. Two games of Yumi so far, and he has dominated on it. The fact that he goes from a new champion release all the way to LPL playing it, means that it is definitely up for contention to pick Vance. And also on that that note, he's played the most Yumi out of anyone in the LPL so far, alongside someone like Crisp, who's picked it up two to three games, so maybe he's more in contention. But at this point, you have to say that BLG, their bottom lane, looks a lot more comfortable than Crystal and Hood, yeah. Because Crystal and Hood, yeah, although, bit of history there in the duo, coming away from Snake in their unglorious years, I'll call it, to somewhat now where, you know, we don't know what OMG's gonna, how OMG's gonna perform. It's curious to see this bottom lane in action. I mean, if we're going to play some word association here, then Crystal and Hoodia definitely uh, resonate with the idea of Growing Pains yeah. because they play well with each other, but they don't play well with the rest of the entire squad. It looks kind of uh, wish-washy when they start joining the rest of the team. Like we mentioned, everybody likes to conglomerate into the mid lane. And we even saw it in uh, the pick bands when Crystal defaulted to his Draven just to make sure that he could get through that alive. I can't believe we've already seen that. One series out of OMG, Crystal joins a new squad. And you know what? He picks up the Draven already. So uh, if that's confidence out of the man's unique pick, then I don't know what is. I mean, it's also one of his uh, star-studded ones. Also, Jackie Love shares that, but pretty much these two are the only players. Looking over on the other side, Jin Zhao really made his name by playing Jin inside of the league, but he's anything but that one trick. I mean, he's picked up a plethora of champions. Siva, Lucian, Zyre as well, and that's only within two series. That was a massive Koro, by the way, in the audience. Like, that was bigger than a person, so... Uh, props to have got that cut out into the stadium. As we are in Chengdu, remember, OMG's home arena. And for OMG, the win already felt good enough against WE. 2-1. and one, And taking that third and final game with the likes of Curses Aurelia. Or rather, Jace, excuse me. Felt very good. So the dynamic of solo killing this top lane is there. I'm just hoping that ADD pulls out a carry matchup himself because although his Poppy is still sitting on a 12, uh, 12 KDA after spring, six games, 80% win rate, I want to see him challenge Curse and show that he could be the better top laner. I'm going to be absolutely honest. You you know what I want to see? I want to see the Aatrox band away because when he got his hands on well, it, it looks too, way yeah, too yeah. strong. So uh, I think that's a little bit of an anomaly. Nobody should really be giving that over to them and... Uh, yeah, look, the only thing we can say is that it's probably most likely going to be banned away, and it's really questionable if it's not. It's a very good turning point because we have to talk about what is going to be priority in this series. Uh, take your mind back to the WE series. Two games, game one and game three. Icon pulls out Renekton mid. And he's not the only person in the LPL to pull out Renekton mid. It's our little pocket pick at the moment. Uh, one game over on the side of Ichi Gaming. Another one over on the side of FPX. Of course, Doombi played it first. Yeah, nobody else has really picked it up in the rest of the other uh, leagues. It's only an LPL special that we take it mid. Another thing that we have to say is that obviously if a Vayne is locked in, don't expect Crystal to play that. I expect Icon to be taking it as a mid lane, although I doubt that he's going to pick it up so early uh, into a, the split. A lot of the time as well, we saw that Vayne going into the Galio. It was a really nice matchup mm -hmm. considering Galio just struggled uh, getting on top of Vayne. So uh, we're not seeing the Galio mid anymore. We doubt to see Icon on that mid as we wait for the players to get ready into game. Getting closer towards this first one, and OMG and BLG. In the past, if we looked at this in spring, we'd say, oh, BLG have this hand in hand, and OMG still would have looked like a 13th, 14th place team. This roster change bumps them up a lot, and it's curious to see if BLG can reassert their form after the FPX series. And it's also just reckless aggression as well, because even though they lost against FPX, they definitely picked something up, and that is the fast place early game play. The fact that they sped it up and they can now do things before laning phase is over, do things before 15 minutes, it is helping them wonders, because that is the strongest way to play League of Legends right now, demonstrated by statistics, of course, so I expect to see that carry through this I mean, game. we saw that in BLG's first series, of course. Harder plays, faster plays, so whether BLG are adapting or looking at at different teams and resulting different strategies. I think this will be a faster game against OMG. In spring, they had one of the quickest losses. Oh. They were up there with IG in game times because OMG just lost quickly. They were not doing well. Sooning even joined that party as well, but I'm expecting it to be for a different reason, maybe challenging BLG and pushing their tempo up. As and well. honestly, it's not even a bad thing. If it's a coin toss, if you're taking all of these 50-50s to make the game faster, to accelerate the builds on all of your carry players as well, I mean, we just talked about all the carry players on OMG, then hopefully that means that the game goes so much faster one way or the other. Well, it's crunch time apparently as we 
jump into game number one, pick and ban. And let's get to it, because OMG and BLG, let's compare to Spring. This one looks much more competitive. So we already take first stock of the bans, and it's BLG who ban out the Aatrox on the red side, and OMG who have their first pick of the litter. A lot of flexes up and available, and they pick up the rise. Very standard bans, especially against Curse to take away his champion pool. One thing to note is that Shinmo's Yumi is definitely off the board. It's not really a Hoodia special, but it is a Shinmo special, so definitely take that away. I'm surprised that Silas got through. It's not really high priority inside of this uh, series. So, I think that most likely is going to be very high contest. And they've taken rid of the Jace, Aurelia, uh, seeing the rise of the first pick. Interesting here for OMG. Of course, we haven't seen Curse play it just yet, but Penguin, stop flirting with danger. You know what's up and available. Uh, the Olaf was banned away. Other S-tier junglers at the moment. J4 locked in against the Sejuani. It's the last one left, so obviously it makes sense. Now, that rise could potentially go into the top side. We haven't seen Curse play uh, AP Mages, we've seen him play more AD champions, so maybe potentially even an Akali could be up in the board. Hovering over the Galio, uh, do want to quickly touch on the fact that uh, Kuro looks to be the better Silas on this team, ADD doesn't fit into his mm -hmm. wheelhouse, again still don't know, but the Lux has made its way through and so has the Pike. Standard red side bans and it's just been frisked over. There is so much that BLG can play with here, and with the Galio locked in from OMG, it ends up being the Nautilus. Let's see what finds its way through that second phase. Not even angry that it's the Nautilus, because honestly, all you need is a hard engage for this team. The only way that people can get into this is the dunk composition coming out from the Jarvan and also the Galio ultimates. So, uh, any way to counter that in order to get into their faces is a better deal. I will say, though, as the Draven away from Crystal gets banned, we are still seeing the Nautilus mid in the LPL. Do and be... Uh, has been the one to play it. Uh, so, Kuro here, how does that playstyle reflect? As uh, the Lux is still open, there's many picks on the board here that BLG can take away. And honestly, right now, with the Galio taken away, you would be looking for something like the Lux or even the Morgana, just to make sure that your ADC is very safe. Crystal does like to play aggressive, so he could do with that little extra safety. Uh, Siv is going to be the ban, though. So, you speak of AD carries, and there's one taken away from BLG. Uh, but Jin Zhao is a bit of a champion wheelhouse, so shouldn't be affected by that Renekton from the flex of Icon and Curse. Now, that is a must. I mean, that one was pretty much expected just because of the fact that the matchup into Silas mid, especially, is really punishing against the Silas. Until level 6, Silas can't really fight against it. Afterwards, it's a little bit better, but not going to touch it entirely. Now, we saw the Siva ban. Another champion that is very high in contest for both of these teams right now is Kaiser. Let's see how that one goes. Yeah, Kaiser's just been the go-to, the standard AD carry. Lucian ban. Okay, Lux is available, and you predicted the Kaiser there, Preacher. Uh, Zayat Rakan has been a standard bottom lane. Ezreal coming in with the Yumi, but it's a pick and choose here for OMG. Definitely could be. Zaya is a good solo, and Rakan works specifically with the Zaya as well. If that Galio is not support. Yeah, of course. I mean, I doubt that it's going to be for Icon, but then <laughs> again, the, the player literally plays anything. Yeah. Make your choice, OMG. Make your choice and make it fast. Uh, Come on. Crystal has already picked up the Sivir, and that's been taken away. So, Zaya, a natural choice here for OMG. Finally going to get an understanding of where everything goes, and if Curse... Is not going to be on that rise. What are they going to take blind into the top lane? Wondering where that Silas is going to go. That's going to be really strange as well if Icon does actually pick up the Galio. I wouldn't really expect it. I did say that the Akali was up. I still don't you know, did. honestly, which one's going to take the Akali and which one's going to take the rise, but it's going to be very interesting to watch. Oh, never mind. Okay. Who's going to take the Riven? Now, Riven can still play mid. She can. Just saying. And it's also a really good matchup into the Silas as well, because the ultimate oh, doesn't really do man. too much. This is beautiful. I tell you one thing, though. There is a Sejuani and a Shin Zhao on the same team. Okay. Is that top lane Sejuani again? Wait a second. Against, they saw the Riven and they thought, you know what can neutralize that? Just a big old boar. Huh. I mean, that's hilarious to watch. You've got the passive. I assume it's always going to be down because Riven can dash infinitely towards this uh, Sejuani to always just poke her out, disengage, and then re-engage when she doesn't have her armor. But other than that, ADD playing a tank is nothing out of his wheelhouse. Yeah, chat, are you upset that we were hyping this match up? Well, you shouldn't be anymore. Because OMG BLG Game 1 has already given us more than what we deserve, more than what we want. It's Riven versus Sejuani in the top lane. New meta. New LPL, we're still on 9.10, by the way. So uh, this is going to be scratching our heads. And 
I think we will have to learn this one together, Preacher. Get on it. One thing that we don't have to learn is how Curse plays when he gets upset just a little bit. Because, of course, he's on the Riven, which is very volatile if she doesn't get the natural 1v1. And Xin Zhao is just a great uh, ganker in general. Yep. So if there is a little bit of focus towards the top side and Curse gets a little bit behind to the point where he can no longer 1v1 the Sejuani, what you get is a situation which Curse just split pushes. Because we saw that on his Camille game where he went a little bit behind and he ultimately lost that game. He just split pushed for days and never joined his team. But going into the Sejuani... That matchup seems volatile against the Riven. Uh, I want to break that down further as we get into Game Preacher and just get your thoughts on what's going to happen in that top side, specifically in the 1v1. But we talked about how uh, volatile as well the jungle was going to be. And both the Jarvan, the Xinjiao in good positions here from Penguin and Meteor to get access into that top lane. And there's potential for Kuro and Icon to roam because the top side of the map is set up so nicely here. And OMG, look like they're nicely set up for those team fights. Ultimately, it's going to be priority on the top Scuttle Crab. Whoever gets it gets ultimate vision and domination. Well, let's find out as we get into game one. OMG taking on BLG. Riven versus Sejuani. That's all I want to see from now to 40 minutes. Because it feels like this one could go the distance to those ultimate wombo combo fights in a series that could be explosive. Does Chengdu care? The question I've been asking when I don't hear the crowd cheers. Thank Here you. we go. The most deflated chat I have ever heard. The man sounds whoa. strained. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I was going to say, you get him, champ. He sounded strained. The solo leader for his team. Ooh. I'm proud of him. Look at the Colonel here. So he's sitting on the line. Uh, Preacher, we need to break down these compositions mm. a little bit more here because the Zaya Galio in the bottom lane. Of course, you have the Kaiser Nautilus. Uh, we know how Nautilus goes into Galio. Remember, you and I had a discussion about it the other day. Yeah, of course. The Nautilus doesn't do too well just because the Galio can always follow up after the hook with his taunt, which is a nice counter engage onto it. One thing that I want to talk about is this looks like a very good denial team composition from OMG. And specifically a denial away from Kuro's ultimate. There are no real good ultimates that he can use. The only one being Ryzen, and that's not really a combat one. True. All of the other ones scale heavily with AD. And normally I hate full AD or very heavy AD compositions, but this one is a good one. I will say late game though, there's the ability to be very active across the map. Kuro has teleport, he has a realm warp to steal, hero's entrance from Hoodyear, so uh, re-engage after re-engage seems possible for BLG, but with this Sejuani pick into the Riven, now we're going to break down another thing, Preacher, because the Riven already getting the early shove in lane as expected, but where does this go? Well, it's very tough for ADD to play under the turret as well. Sejuani doesn't have any auto-attack resets, and her abilities either don't do enough damage or do too much as a base, so it's going to be very difficult for him to farm under the turret in general, but the one thing that ADD brings, which is why, honestly, he picked the champion into the Riven, whether it was into the Riven or not, is the fact that him and Meteor can always gank this lane with such high amounts of CC. I'd be curious as to when you start stacking up the armor a little bit, but for ADD, he has a Doran's ring to start off oh, and the nice. Aftershock to negate. As Meteor, Hail of Blades, Shin Zhao walking into the mid lane into Icon. The Audacious Charge is not going to connect. Icon just gets slowed down and Meteor walks away. It's a little bit unfortunate to see Meteor not actually pick up the early ganks, but of course he is on the bottom side of the map, so this is not his priority. It doesn't matter too much whether he gets it or not. And hmm. he just wants to get a whole lot of vision priority down, especially on the Scuttlecraps. Taking a quick look, though, at the top lane and ADD's rune set. Approach velocity on the Sejuani. That is ingenious. Yeah, yeah, Throw an ult and just run at him. Makes sense. You're going to be up in the front lines. And especially seeing as he built a Doran's ring early, I wouldn't expect an AP Sejuani, but expect a little bit of AP on the side, like, for instance, a Rod of AP. I'm wondering if we're going towards the direction of seeing uh, what we saw in spring with Flandre taking it to the top side where it was the AP Sejuani, building a lot of flat health, so you steal the tank, but you do a bucket load of damage, of course, in the mid game. Yeah, and obviously the fact that you don't need to build too many resistances on Sejuani because you got your passive and also your aftershock, so you're going to be healthy for a very long time if you just build straight uh, health and also AP. It's a good build path for ADD, but once again, it is just the 1v1 laning that we are worried a little bit about. And you also said, mentioning the Scuttle Crab in Champion Select and how that's going to affect it. Well, it is secured by BLG and they have 
so much vision towards that top side. I do want to drop a bit of knowledge for everyone out there who hasn't tuned into Hit BLG me. at the moment. Uh, still one of the best warding teams in the LPL, and BLG consistently play that Korean-style League of Legends. Of course, a lot of warding, safe play, but that changed just a little bit as uh, Curse is looking to back off ADD. I'm curious as to how this matchup's going, because you got full vision, but Curse is starting to get bullied out. Can I just say as well, that point is really nuanced, because not only are BLG staying so far ahead in the warning game, but Shinmo has played so many Yumi games as well. Yumi is a champion that can't really move around the map of ward, so the fact that he's keeping up on it means that this team really heavily prioritizes it, and you could see that in this slow and calculated playstyle. Only the bad Yumis don't detach Preacher. <laughs> you know, the good ones, they take Solid their own warning. little adventure, yeah, and it's... A lot more balls here as Meteor starts the invade off. Now, this is going to be spotted by OMG. What is the counter response? Because on the bottom side, Penguin is slowly making his way in, but Meteor starting to build a lead up in this jungle, and he's going to go for the full clear. And he's also gone for the challenging smite as well. So he's relying purely on his third hit for the knockup and also for everything from ADD in order to lock people down. He's going for a much more damaging route, which I really like. All right, I see the boots as well. So you've got that extra mobility on the top of Penguin. A TP just going to be channeled here from Kuro. Penguin going to be spotted out moving into the jungle. There's a level difference between the junglers and Meteor. He's finding his prey, walking to him. One, two, and three. Is he going to get the knockup? He times it with the audacious charge, but Penguin is out of there. So aggressive move from Meteor, but he doesn't find his prey. And it ultimately works to deny a whole lot of time away from Penguin. Because if you take a look at them, it's level 5 against level 4. Penguin spent a lot of time trying to invade that as well. Meteor is just playing the defensive game, working out because it denied an invade. I will say, though, it gives Penguin time to catch up, uh, pull back on some of that experience, as that's a very deep ward on the side of ADD. So BLG are playing that vision game right back. Because now we're just seeing the level 6 and... This is where things could turn ugly with Kuro coming up. Yeah, three up. man onto the top side of the map. So far, we have to see if Kuro's actually stolen the Realm Warp or not. But they choose to disengage. Okay, passive needs to go down alongside Aftershock for Curse to get better trades off here. And finally, it's gone. But they get the Permafrost into the Winter's Flail. And trades going better for ADD at the time being. So finally seeing this matchup first time in the LPL. We're starting to see, like we talked about, what happens at that level 6 mark. And look, the funniest thing is the fact that Obviously, people don't really think about it, but the best part about Sejuani's clear is her permafrost. It does percentage damage, and it's actually capped against uh, minions inside of the jungle. Yeah. However, once you take it into the top lane, no capital, flat percentage onto Curse, and you can already see it shoving him down. He's got double dorns. There's a ruby health crystal there as well as uh, Meteor having the time of his life. I don't know why I said Meteor was invading before. He's in his own jungle. I apologize, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, he's having the time of his life in his own jungle. Because yeah. nobody's contesting. I was looking up there because we did see some vision from OMG. So it was more like that Penguin was tracking the side of Meteor. So, of course, once again, I do apologize about that. But he's gone to clearing the rest of his jungle. His blue buff will be up, but he has no intention of going back there. Curse is in a dangerous position underneath his turret. And Meteor still has not been spotted out. And that is also just such a smart place to put a control ward. Because the only time that people walk through that control ward are when they want to gank mid and go straight from the side. Everything else is denied away very heavily from it. And usually when you have that mindset, you don't stop to clear it. You'd have to hope that that ward was kind of worth it or, or whatever happens here will be. Because Meteor loses the dragon on the bot side while the flash comes forward onto ADD. Oh, Curse trying to take the 1v2, the solo kill king. So far, the rookie gets dropped. And it's first blood for BLG. And that is just like clockwork. You have the ultimate available. Xin Zhao comes. The third hit for the knockup as well. What can you do except just get CC'd to death and then slowly killed by ADD or Meteor diving you? And a simple trade-off for OMG will be getting the blue buff. So now it's an invade onto the blue side, folks. And uh, Icon just walks back to lane. Kuro gets denied the turret plating. Deny it from him. There you go. Uh, as they're going to get a blue buff handoff here. A one for one. And you thought that that worked out so well for OMG because they at least got a consolation prize from that first blood going over to the enemies. Yeah. Not even because Kuro just denies it away. A simple trade. And you've got to say, so far, that control ward, although it is smart, has not quite paid off. And we're looking at the little things here in this first game because at 8 minutes in, BLG have a lead short 700 gold from that first blood that went over to Meteor. But in this game, CS is practically even across all lanes. This rarely happens in the LPL, considering how explosive it is. So you can see how well matched OMG and BLG feel coming into the summer split. Definitely makes sense, though, because if you take a look at the matchup, especially in the bottom lane, we were talking about how Nautilus doesn't do too great into the Galio just because of the matchup in skills, but also the fact that he wants his OK Meteor. Preacher, I'm going to have to interrupt you because Meteor's been jumped on, has to pop the ultimate immediately. Icon is chasing him up, but good audacious charge gets out of the range. Now OMG 
though, in a bad position as a flash away from Penguin with the Ignite Hood. Yeah, just this punch into the robot of death. And his death will be first. It's Penguin who gets his blood. Did not calculate it. No vision down either because Shinmo just wanted to flash over and re-engage onto Penguin on his way out. Did not anticipate that nearly five members were there just waiting for him and falls to his demise. And so that means for OMG, finally they can get some control back on the map as BLG still holding handily in that top side. Uh, ADD, by the way, just take your conversation elsewhere because ADD has decided to go for health regeneration so far. So we've got the Ninja Tabby, we've got a Mana Crystal in there. I'm so curious because it looks like it could just be like a Righteous Glory first with the Double Doran's Ring Sejuani. That's literally what I was going to say because it works so well with the Zin Zhao Meteor building full damage. All you need is that Righteous to slow Curse down to lock him up with your Sejuani abilities as well and just let Zin Zhao kill her with all of his damage. That's very true. So good little wombo combination uh, from the top side of the map of BLG. And it's also good adaptation because usually you don't come into the game thinking that you'll rush a Righteous, but because Meteor got ahead early, you start building it. You really do, but OMG have swapped around their lanes, so we'll look at the Sejuani a little bit later because the back needs to come here from ADD. Curse made the move. In fact, it's OMG who proactively started this. Curious to see where it develops because ADD still hasn't backed. Here we go. OMG are going to go for the face check. Now, in a 2v1, I'm not sure how this handles, but then we go into the permafrost, ADD does zero damage now. Yeah, I mean, Hoodia does really well into ADD just because of the natural magic resistance and the shield coming out from Galio. So, oop, okay. That was a mistake, Crystal, but you know what? We Get all the have camera a, off this man. We all have a bad timing for the camera. Darn right, Bridget. Yeah, that's a little bit unlucky. I think <laughs> BLG saw it as well. So now they're they like, want to actually well, take advantage no, of it. Well, let's get the Rift Herald. Let's do it. I mean, what can Crystal honestly do, there's, even if they dive him? There's no vision there, Preacher. So after that ult, yeah, so on the money here. Rift Herald gets started. You can literally do whatever you want onto the top or side not. because Hoodia doesn't even have his ultimate, oh, yeah. so can't even point blanket to give him the extra armor and magic resist. Uh, Meteor just pulling it away too. There is no vision inside of that pit. And BLG know it after sweeping it away. Hoodia now drops the warp with the control ward there. Contested by OMG, not just yet. Here we go, though. Who do you want this, TP? Justice Punch into the shield of Duran. Flash was available, but didn't want to take it as TP. Does come in, ADD has the Glacial Prison. Oh! Flash missed. Crystal is not in form in this game. And now he sure knows it gets the Blade Call, though. Redemption was almost there. Redemption for his soul. OMG's Eddie carry drops, and now it's back to the Rift Herald. Ah, uh, you hate to see it. The missed ultimate and also the missed Flash as well. Crystal, he, there was nothing saving him. Remember that ADD still has the ultimate available, Preacher, or rather he doesn't, excuse me, use it in that last trade, so they're not able to follow up even if they wanted to, and OMG had the push on the inside of mid lane. So now let's see if BLG want to take this one. They have to be cognizant of where exactly OMG uh, members are positioned. And they also need to keep track of the ultimates. They should have known that Hoodia didn't have his ultimate, but does have it now. Now is not a good time for BLG to fight. On that note as well, Penguin is two levels behind. So even though he has the Cataclysm, he will not have the same experience, the same level advantage uh, that Meteor does. And once ADD, two levels behind the top lane up. As he's going to get poked up too. Not to mention that he also went for the Cinder Hulk, so the damage is also lacking from his end. It's yep. great if you lock it up. <laughs> you got to do something later. Penguin Come on, got Meteor. that, by the way. Come on. Oh, wait, did he get it? Yeah, Meteor charged it and Penguin got it. So a Look nice little win for OMG as BLG going to find one themselves. It's Hoodier backing in the middle of nowhere. And Icon, can he save his support? He might actually just die for it as he spreads himself with the Spell Flux, but with the Riptide up, send him with a Depth Charge. BLG just keep getting pick after pick. My heart will go on is definitely playing in my head Very right now relevant. because yeah, it yeah. was for Icon defending Hoodia. I'm gonna say questionable in terms of the choice, but it worked out to save his support, which does mean that if there is a fight in the duration that Icon is dead, at least there's uh, a heroic entrance. You say after those couple of kills that OMG should be much further behind, so keeping up with the gold due to uh, CS in the mid lane, the top lane now for Curse, he's just been farming away, but. The kill distribution is my worry here, because BLG, one on Jin Zhao. Shinmo's in a good position here. Meteor has two kills as well with Warriors. Penguin is just walking oh, at him. Hit. Cataclysm, he wants to go down, because the hero's entry is going to save the day, but it's cancelled too. Hoodia has been caught out, and Icon needs to save him. But ADD's got Penguin. They'll trade it off for BLG. He can't Arctic Assault out. And now Icon gets Blood too. You definitely need to give props where it's due. ADD is playing like a monster. Even though he died just then, he did so well for the rest of his team, cancelling the ultimate coming out from Hoodia to make sure that everybody else is so secure. Didn't even know that Shimo was going to casually use his stopwatch there either. Everybody works out safe. In a composition that's so good for pick here from BLG, uh, it's impressive that OMG getting the picks in return, you're right. So at this point though for BLG, still trades a trade, still getting something there and 
And we'll take a quick little replay because it was over the Rift Herald again. Yeah, and that was the missed engage. You have to watch Penguin's eyes because he wants blood going straight past ADD in order to go to the rest of the team. There's the stopwatch. Cancelled Galio as well. Yeah. Man, that was punishing. And it's just a shame that ADD died because he did so much for his team. It was such a scuffle over Rift Herald there. And I was like, what is going on? I'm definitely getting confused by the fact that the Sejuani and the Shinji are in the same game, and I'm like, where's ADD coming in with Smite? Like, what's happening here? Where's the where's the Cinderhawk? Yeah, it hurts your brain a little bit, but the great thing, even though he died, is the fact that he picked up the Rift Held throughout all of that, so yep. he's going to be able to pop it right now. Oh, he's popping it into the mid lane, and no one's there from OMG. It's going to be a one-shot. Uh, this oh, should no, be stop. close to it. doesn't matter. ADD can make it a bit of a one-shot. The charge is in. Close enough, I'd say. Yeah. I mean, if he can get this off as well, Nobody else can contest it, and is going to get a second charge, which is really strong for BLG because they didn't anticipate that. Yeah, they've just got full map control right now. BLG up towards the Cloud Dragon. This is going to be not stolen. Oh, Close. Kuro actually took his ulti before and used it just as they got the Dragon. So it was ulti for ulti, but... Yeah, and too close in my book. That was definitely very close. But now that we got a little bit of lull in the action, we can start to take a look at the builds and how it's going for both of these two teams. One thing that stands out for me is that Kuro is definitely on his power spike. The 10% CDR from Kindle Gem, as well as the Ludens Echo, he's yeah. going to be firing all of his chains off in the middle of a team fight or even just wave clearing. And another thing as well is that Jin, uh, Jinjiao has opted for the Man Immune build, which will take a little bit of time uh, to turn online. I know that you know that from personal experience, but eventually... <laughs> It does mean that he's going to be stronger in terms of the scaling late game. Yeah, for context, Raz wasn't happy about that one. <laughs> Nobody was happy in that game. Well, we'll skip it. I got three kills and I... Yeah, anyway, long story short, uh, Man Immune can be very good. So Jin Zhao will be scaling, as you said, as Curse now on a 1v1. ADD wants to take the Arctic Assault. Let's go. Permafrost is there. But I think Curse eventually wins out after the Aftershock, aftershock and the passive depletes. Yeah, but given that you have both those two things to fight through, it is such a tough window for him to ever find ADD in a position where you're just like, okay, now I can actually hit him. I was I was contemplating before game what kind of matchup I want to see, and we did say carry matchup. Uh, this is different, but you got to remember this still fits into like the poppy tree, the uh, uh, the scion, it does. more or less. So ADD is not out of his wheelhouse. In fact, this pick so far has been uh, quite good, helping out the pick style that we talked about with BLG and. Easy to get the lane shoved here with the flail, move Meteor down and get another turret. Yeah, look, I am a little bit disappointed in OMG's positioning throughout the map because they have allowed mid to fall to the ADD with the Rift Herald and now they're allowing bottom lane to fall as well. Take a look at where their members are distributed on the map. They are getting nothing out of this trade. They couldn't even get top lane turret and this is just so punishing uh, in terms of goal difference. I think they're going to get it now though, Preacher. So although you're right, you know, the trade comes through first from the side of BLG. Uh, the push came through, they actually pulled off of it. So, yeah, down right. Jin Zhao and Shinmo saved the top lane turret. BLG trading ahead 2-0 to zero in the turret game right now. And BLG have a firm grasp on this gold lead, about 2,000, uh, almost 500. And in the bank, where's that gold coming from? Well, jungle v jungle, a core matchup that has gone so well for Meteor in game one. It's definitely helping out. The turrets are also another thing that's helping out. Look, it, we're going to speak honestly. The kills were a little bit funny, especially in the early game. You know, Crystal missing two of his escape abilities. However, the turrets, that is a real big worry for OMG. And if they don't do anything in order to respond to this, then BLG are going to win it just through attrition alone and busting down these turrets. Because we get to this mid-game, and Sejuani now has two items. Uh, we're almost to a protobelt, it looks like, here for Kuro. And towards that Gwinsu's Rageblade for Jin Zhao. So, a lot of good things to mention here for BLG, but it's not like OMG aren't catching back up. Icon already has the Archangel Staff stacking up. Here we go. And two items almost on Crystal and Curse. He finds this engage. Well, he's got the Black Cleaver and the Corefield's Warhammer. So, and also notice this, everyone. I want you to look at your screens and see Let's how go. many uh, Merc treads we have on the side of OMG. Three so far. I expect that to grow. Yeah, I mean, everybody's just watching out for ADD to make sure that he can't hyper lock people down. Also, Shinmo is very good uh, post engage after ADD gets in there. I just want to say, this is something that was definitely preference uh, in before we actually got into this game when we were talking about Curse. If he gets behind even a 0 1, the general he just split pushes for days and he doesn't join his team. Looks like it's a self fulfilling prophecy within this game because he is just off on the side and it's not working well for him. And team. I think he needs backup because the rest of BLG are making the push. We talked about controlled late games. BLG are pushing the tempo oh, once no. again against OMG in game number one. And this inhibitor turret is under five. Penguin's coming in, but will BLG stay? 
so far, they're just going to back. But take a look at the HP on that turret. Like, honestly speaking, they got that for free because there was no disengage uh, from OMG. There was no defense from OMG either. And they are playing towards Curse's weakness. And that is, if you just get him 0-1, literally 0-1, you don't see him in fights. Because Crystal's not moving. He's staying in the mid lane. He's getting the push out. ADD will find him as he walks on in. Uh, good vision from ONG to get that, but Crystal dodging away good. from the ulti. That's the first step, because now he has to dodge away from the permafrost as feathers fly out. He flashes away. There's the depth charge. ADG jumps on forward into the bone plate. He gets a bit of resistance, but the Cataclysm comes down as well while Koro hits the back line. Curse is trying to carry on the ribbon here. Can he, with a two-man stun, he does his damage. Hoodye flashes after him with the shield of Duran, but OMG want to keep on this going with the flag and drag oh. Penguin. How did you do that? That was the need, the need for speed, and Penguin just does it so well. Jin Zhao will escape, but I've already seen my play. I'm going to say the same thing I say after I sneeze. Excuse me? That was perfect coming out from Penguin. <laughs> Take a look at that QE. Usually you're tempted to use your flash full distance. He used it minimal distance to make sure that both people got knocked up in that. What beautiful outplay coming out from OMG to come back into this game. Man, Penguin, that's a good moment to recall if you ever want to ask yourself about this jungler. Just as aggressive as Curse. And uh, that small little outplay from OMG will pick them up a second ocean. It started with ADD and looking for Crystal. Also props to Crystal because although he blows literally everything in his kit, he actually does get out of this situation. Ultimate and also flash after the case to make sure that he doesn't get killed by ADD enables him to do so much damage onto the front line. ADD can't do anything. And eventually this is the re-engage that we're watching for the Rise Realm Warp as well to catch out Meteor Kuro. Watch for the Jarvan QE flash. Onto Meteor. Oh. Down onto Jin Zhao as well. Both are knocked up. Almost got Jin Zhao by the end of that play as well. So on that fight, Icon picks up a couple of kills. And now, Preacher, you've got almost a two-item rise. He's got a needlessly large rod. This is going to be a bit of an Icon show, I feel, in this game number one. And although Curse not performing as well as we hyped him up to be, still in that fight, keeping the back line tiresome, keeping them on top of him. Curse was doing a magnificent job at distracting the rest of BLG and stopping them from getting anywhere near the rest of OMG. He did the best that he possibly could, and there's not a lot that a Riven can really do in a straight 5v5 because she is very vulnerable, and if somebody locks her up as opposed to her locking other people up, then it's not a good time for the Riven, but Curse played it out as best as he possibly could have for a 0-1 Riven, and I just hope to see him engage in these fights a whole lot more because it doesn't matter how many kills that he gets. If he can buy enough time for Crystal, you saw that. Crystal can kite back and get himself kills onto ADD. When ADD is charging at you and doesn't die with the help of the stone plate, uh, that's pretty good news for BLG, if they can capitalize on that. So Kuro is an absolute machine, and Curse is trying to get to machine status in this first game. Minions, thank you, says BLG. They get the top lane turret, so still ahead in gold here at 22 minutes in the game, and next objective seems to be around the Baron, which is just littered with vision from both sides. Four turrets to one, definitely the biggest deciding factor between these two teams, and you would have to imagine that this is the best opportunity while everybody on BLG is back for OMG to clear vision and get vision for themselves. Very difficult to do, mind you, because we just said that BLG is a very fo uh, vision-focused team. However, if ever there were a time for you to start uh, denying that away, it has to be now. OMG have already started, because now look at the pit once again. There's a couple of deep wards from BLG denying what could be a flank teleport, what could be a flank realm warp oh, uh, towards the Baron. Yeah, 80. Okay, never mind. Yeah, all right. He got We're control water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Control water is the hardest CC because people just stop for it. Hardest CC. Fair enough. Walk into that brush. Go on. Wait, does he actually get out? Oh, I man. Icon's out. Wait, cancel it. Oh, okay. I think he... Wait a second. What are you doing? He could potentially 1v1 him. You madman. I would. If I was Icon, you have a Banshee's Veil now. Yeah, but there's a Gargoyle Stone play. Yeah, but there's a needlessly large rod, <laughs> so I don't know, Preacher. I would like to see that 1v1 happen, said no one ever in the tank <laughs> first rise. Uh, but he's two and a half items now. Curse just picked up his second item as well, and uh, BLG finally clearing out some of this vision. We propped them for their control around uh, neutral objectives like Baron, Dragon, and the Elder too. Uh, for BLG, they have been shut out by OMG coming into this mid-game with pure vision, and they've got so many parts of the map they have to respond to, like this one. Icon gets more free gold. Uh, this is what you wanted. You wanted the uh, solo into the ADD. We have to watch it right now. However, you have to take a look at how BLG moved in order to get that vision back for themselves around the Baron pit. Uh, on paper, Shinmo did nothing. Jinjiao did nothing. But because they moved around with 
Meteor. It meant that he was free to just get that uh, Scuttle Crab for himself and just get so much vision down to the point where OMG can't even sneak around the side. Yeah, BLG have so much more priority now. And you can see Icon has backed away in vision as well. BLG know he could be coming and they're able to push this mid lane wave. Still testing up towards the Baron. Curse going to help out a lot for OMG by getting that wave shoved up towards the river. Now for BLG, they have to watch out his pathing and how OMG could start the fight. This is, feels bad for OMG because they need to walk into Vision in order to get rid of Vision, and that is perfect engage potential for BLG, who's all standing around here. You just have to hold your breath and wait to see uh, whether they can clear it out or whether it's going to backfire into the face. Against the composition that has so much gap closed, and you're not going to see it coming, Penguin. Uh, Kuro just letting him know he's there. But at the 25-minute mark, still a 9-kill game. Seems slow, but the pace of it never has. Penguin is walking in now, finally face-checking. Meteor. Meteor. Might be actually caught out by Archon. He gets bursted down, flashes out. OMG already started this fight off right as ADD has to pop the stone plate again. He has Warmogs, folks. It's a three-item Sejuani, so he's going to be full health in no time. And that was the best possible time for OMG to fight. This is risky, though. Do not start up the Baron because there is so much re-engage from BLG. I was about to say Meteor was so low to the point where he might as well be dead because there's no way that he can jump in, but Curse wasn't around. So OMG had to delay it, and that delay turned into enough time for Meteor to lifesteal, and it's all disengaged once again. Simply clearing away the vision around that Baron pit is now towards the bottom side. There's a triple ocean available for OMG, and and BLG looked pretty frank on denying that. The bad thing about the Ocean Drake at this current point in time is that it's going to be an all or nothing. There's very little poke coming out from BLG. So it's either going to be you straight 5v5 them or you don't. And that Ocean Drake is very rarely going to come in handy for OMG. There you go. Pick it up though for BLG. And the gold, by the way, quick check up there into the scoreboard. Still only 2,000. So there's no defining factor that seals away this game one for either team at the moment. But you still look at part of the scaling and what OMG has. You've got Ryze, you've got Zaya. Two items for Zaya, by the way, on Crystal. You've also got Curse, who wants to now find ADD and get some revenge in that top lane. And with the help of Icon, they might. There's a Realm Warp over the top. Here comes the Cavalry. The minions don't want to party with this one. Curse picks up his first kill of the game. Great animation cancelling from Curse. You've got to respect the mechanics when you see them. He pretty much used his auto attack to cancel his two Qs and then used his W to catch up to ADD to do damage and also lock him down for the Realm Warp. Very nicely played. Okay, so BLG, top lane has just been solo killed. 30 seconds to utilize that TP and Penguin is searching out. He can smell Kuro in the other brush. And OMG, do they, do they press the trigger here is my biggest question. Uh, I'm going to go with a very hard no, because if they do, then that's going to lock them up with so much uh, magic resist denial. And if you take a look at the magic damage coming out from Kuro and also from Jinja, too much to deal with. So it's back to clearing vision here for OMG as Kuro, yeah, becomes a nuisance once again. And BLG is still in a very comfortable position to walk towards this Baron pit where OMG haven't been able to deny as much vision as they thought. Curse just roaming between lanes, so we're steadily getting towards that late game. I said at the start, this looks like it could be a 40-minute game, 40-minute controlled, paced game here to start us off in the series. It honestly can, and this is very firmly in BLG's grasp. You take a look at 5-5, five, five, you, uh, you take a look at how nobody's really engaging onto the Baron, you say, what do you mean? This looks very even. No, BLG are very firmly in control of this game, because if it keeps on going tit for tat, I clear this wave, you clear that one, BLG come out ahead, because they will always have the engage, and if you give Jin Zhao the resources in order to scale, as well as Kura just off in a side lane, then they are going to do wonders with it. You saw the Colonel's predicted, uh, prediction sorry, early, and that is because of the late scaling. I mean, Colonel was only 1% sure, though, Breach. But it was so going downwards into BLG. Yeah, we're going to stop trusting go. KFC and stop trusting that the hook won't land. Shinmo is going to get Penguin, and Hoodje had a different thought as he flashes out of there. Icon wants to make a, a bit of a revenge play, but it's already the jungle lost, and OMG may have stepped too far this time. If you could just kill one member, you would choose Penguin, because it is going to be a Baron Nash, and nobody can contest it from OMG. The best they could do is push mid lane. Wow, that goes down so fast as well. 2k, curse, curse. over Ulti. the wall. Ulti into the Baron, no! Oh. You could see the attempt. You hoped Curse might even get out of there as well. And BLG lose their mid lane turret, but they get Baron on all five. And now they have to be barreling down mid lane because while Penguin is still dead, they've got the Baron buff fresh 
and they can start doing work with it. And the oh, no. Curse is nice. Hoodier caught backing again. Wait a second. Hoodier actually killed himself in this because he used his E, but he got hit by the Sejuani. Doesn't matter. He's dead anyway. It looks like that's it for Hoodier. So Jin Zhao picks up that kill, and that is the second time this game that Hoodier's been caught out backing. Oh, man. That is a feels bad moment right now. And, uh,. I thought the Kuro could have taken that just because of the backup that he had, but it doesn't even matter. No, it doesn't need to take the matchup right now. You still got the Baron buff. You got a firm lead in this game. Riven ulti now. Popped Icon is going to take him into a 1v1, but Penguin has joined the fray as well. After chocking and negating a lot of that damage to flash out from Icon. Bitten off way too much once again. An OMG member getting ambitious. Tell me something new in this first game. Yeah, look, you like seeing Icon because he makes such ballsy plays like that, but you also don't like to see it because he unnecessarily needed to use his flash in order to get out of that. He, You know for certain that he's going to need that in the next team fight when BLG are barreling down into his uh, t uh, base, but he's not going to have it. That's right, Icon's level 16 as well. As Colonel weighs in once more, he heard me talking about him. And he says, hysterics! Mate, you're talking smack, you're getting 80 the percent BLG believe it as well, that's why they're all the way back in. That's Hoodyear dead once again. The hero's entrance to get it in, used by the Silas' Curse, picks up one. Now with the Blade Caller out, can you get something back as ADD has passed a very unique way? Won't die just here, but Curse getting the kill as a response might slow things down. This is so good for BLG as well, because they still have engage on ADD, whereas OMG lost their engage onto the Galio. So now OMG can't really do too much except hug the turrets. But remember... Kuro is level 16 Silas now as well. So what makes this worse, even a 5v5, is that Silas will have all five ultis in a fight. 15 second cooldown. Man, can you say anything other than the fact that you have to be scared? All I have to say for that is that it, uh, OMG but, are very lucky yeah. that they uh, drafted the way that they did because the ultimates that they can steal, not the best, but still good enough that you was, want to. I was going to say, Kuro might not have all five, but you have close to it the longer it goes on. So uh, you're looking at a... Four item Silas in the making that is going to wreak havoc in the mid game and uh, late game rather as we're already there. And it was Hoodie getting caught out yet again. Yeah, but you have to look at the response coming out from What is he doing? Everybody's going forward and they actually managed to trade back onto Shinmo just because of Curse's ultimate. That's what you want to see. If anybody was going to get the resources, it has to be Curse because he's starting to do damage now. I just want to see the third Q disrupt everybody. Good for BLG to find that pick. Hoodie was definitely not expecting. Uh, to see a whole team, a whole army, I should say, of BLG around the corner. Uh, BLG still with this Baron buff haven't been able to break the base. It's a good news story for OMG. They're 4k gold down just about, and BLG are still trying to get through that bottom lane inhibitor. And I know that I'm detaching us a little bit from the wider picture of BLG barreling down into the base of OMG, but take a look at the wards that's in the bottom half of the map for BLG. They have got this completely oh, locked down. Screw the wards. Let's teleport to a minion, Preacher, as Hoodie gets go. locked down against Shinmo up towards the inhibitor. It's Curse and Penguin you need to look at for the engage as Hoodie gets. Saw it out once again. ADD walks up, but for BLG, they've already got their prize. The inhibitor broken, and that's the last of the Baron buff. Man, I'm going to take back my point about the wards. That was enabled by the wards. The fact that OMG didn't know exactly where BLG were. They can't walk outside the base, and that bought a free entrance for BLG into the bottom lane. Able to break open that inhibitor. Now for BLG, it's next on the menu, and that's the double cloud. Enable that Elder. Enable another dragon that is going to wreak havoc alongside with them, and... And BLG dotting the I's, crossing the T's, it seems, here in this game, number one. And OMG, it's not like they're out of hope, but they're going to require a miracle out of these solo laners to bring this game back. If you take a look at the dragon distribution for both of these two teams, seems like a bit of a joke, but I definitely prefer the two Cloud Drakes coming out from BLG just because of their engage potential. Get it down and get it sorted onto OMG. Oh, fine Crystal, almost. ADD using that Cloud Dragon to fruition as ADD takes zero damage here. Oh, who Three members again? of OMG mid, and Hood, yeah, saves his life this time, Preacher. I'll give him that one on the 0-3 Gallio. Look, it happened again. Hoodia tries to go backwards with his uh, punch. However, he runs into the members of BLG, and uh, that's the second time that's happened to him. Yeah, it really is. Hoodia getting caught out. 30 seconds on the clock. Baron not going to be up for it. Looks like another two minutes or so. They've taken away the timer, and it's really, really bugged me uh, since starting this split. So I'm going to have to have some words about that. But assume with me, ladies and gentlemen, that two minutes or so. Sink uh, your clock. Next Baron. Yeah, set it up. Uh, Elder's going to be coming up next. Beers down there for you as well, BLG. Have a good cold sip. Uh, they serve warm beer in this country sometimes, which annoys me. Uh, that's a different argument for a different story, different session. Back in my day, yeah. we had Baron timers, but it wasn't actually in client, so we had to write it down in chat. Your old man voice yeah. does not sound old at all. <laughs> I was trying my hardest. <laughs> oh, God. It's 
It's an old time coming here for BLG because they've been so patient with their games, even though the early games and mid-games have been a lot more straightforward, a lot faster, I should say. Still, you get to this point, and it's just simplified. What do they do next? They wait for the Baron. They wait for the Elder. They get the waves pushed out. They secure vision. It's so simple that OMG have to scramble just to get in their area. And look, scaling has been very kind towards BLG. Take a look at the items. War Mugs and also Locket coming out for ADD. He's got so much HP for the rest of these entire fights. Cool. He even just wants a 1v1 curse. Let's yep, go. Let's go for the 1v1. Meteor. Meteor's coming in as well. That's not really fair, Wait is it, second. BLG? But curse is starting to output some damage. Now to ADD. The hero's entrance there. Icon TP's in as well, but he needs to survive. Goes Golden Curse, gets the three-man stun. Here we go for OMG. They get the knockup, but the AoE damage from BLG hits harder first until they bring in Crystal oh. of Will. OMG, it's the Wombo Combo. I was waiting for this one, and Crystal made some mistakes earlier, but by God, does this make up for it now? He came back strong. You didn't even expect him because he was out of the fight. It looked like a 3v5 coming out for OMG, but the later Crystal comes in, the better because he doesn't need to use his abilities to get out, he just goes straight in. He didn't even use his ulti because he was saving it for a good time. Good time never came because he just started auto -in. And you know who started that fight, Preacher? Curse. We'll get to that in a moment as I'm sure we'll have a replay. Icon starts spreading like wildflower. It's Woo. a dirty disease, but Icon is okay there. Everything comes up right for OMG. And for BLG, that slow pace, that fight they thought they had, dissipates as the Baron and the Tempo now is over to OMG. And do not forget, this is a Rise which will scale very hard. This is a Riven whose Q3 will always be relevant throughout the rest of the game, even if her damage isn't. So the fact that they got that team fight on their terms, even though they were there later than BLG, it worked out so well for OMG, and they even pick up the Baron and the turrets for it. Big turnaround, Preacher. We finally get to see it and curse. Survive so darn long. Check your minimap as well. Everybody from OMG is so far away comparatively. Here's the TB from Icon and also Houdia's ultimate. Take a look at where Crystal is. He's not wow. even into the fight and he joins much later, but nobody is targeting him. Take a look at all of this AoE. Bam, he is just burning people down with the Jarvan ultimate to lock everybody in place. Nobody can escape. Everyone did something in that fight. Not often that you say that. Crystal hitting the AoE. Houdia makes up for his deaths. Flashes in with a three-man shield of Duran. So every element of OMG came into play. And it's good to see that these side lanes weren't hyped up for nothing as... Yep, Curse did 5k damage, and Jin Zhao just tried to carry the hell out of that fight. It was just a shield composition. You were expecting the Jarvan ultimate to come out with the Galio ultimate. Didn't even happen. Galio wanted to engage, and then the W was what won them. See if OMG can dissipate from this fight, though, because ADD's looking for the flank, and OMG looks separated. Still in this brush. Are OMG going to face check this? Oh, this is very risky for BLG, Whoa. because they've Curse got the outside yet. track. They are slow to this. They really are. It's going to be mid turret with the Baron, but BLG can't go to it. This is very risky for them, and now BLG, they have to decide how Meteor gets into the rest of this fight. Will they look for the flank, because Meteor is nowhere nearby. The level 16 Shin Zhao cannot get in there just yet. He's waiting. There's so much respect coming out from OMG because they know at any point ADD can press the R button and if it hits Crystal, then it could just be GG for OMG. So they have to play it safe, but they got a lot out of it. And if you take a look at the gold differential between these two teams, swung back into OMG's favor. Yeah. I think we need to see a big ult from Meteor to separate the team of OMG Preacher. I think we need to see that circle far and wide in the middle of five members. And for Kuro and Jinjiao to start picking them apart with ADD in the backside on top of Crystal, Icon or Curse. So now that BLG have started up the Dragon, keep in the back of your mind. But OMG, they need to get those conditions right again, even though they're up in gold. But this is what we need to watch out for. Penguin is obviously off on the side, does have the level 15 smite compared to the level 16 of Meteor. Curse is not there just yet. He's going to be spotted going over a control ward. Dragon resets. Going around the long way, but it's going to be worth it. Meteor has been spotted. He flashes into the back line, into Icon. But Icon gets the shield. He starts spreading as Kuro goes in as well. Kuro's found one oh into boy. the GA. Jin Zhao's still alive as well. And he's hitting hard in the backside. Look at Jin Zhao. Look at Crystal. He doesn't get the root. OMG getting torn apart. Kuro gets the backside. You're but kidding. it still spreads around. Icon lives. And Kuro is going to be short-lived after this play away. He flashes, he survives, but I think OMG have done it. Beautiful outplay from OMG's backline as well, living for what felt like a year in the middle of that team fight to make sure that nobody died. Crystal finally falling in the end, but Icon dishing out the deeps. Curse, rough early game on the ribbon, but you never say this. 
Good recovery in the mid to late game there. OMG's top lane and solo lane will now dive onto the last member of BLG, but they don't need him to take this game number one in style. And what great comebacks from OMG. It was two definitive fights, one around the Elder Drake, one around the Baron. They took both so well, and you could see it in the eyes of BLG. They wanted the hard picks. They wanted to find Curse off on the side, but the fact that he managed to survive, the fact that everybody else could either TP or ulti in, and Crystal's late joining, it just worked out wonders. Didn't it just come off the back of what compositions they were? And we outlined pretty specifically what BLG are looking to do. And as they got those picks, they got closer and closer towards the end of the game. But Goldgraf tells a million stories once again, or rather just a very good one for OMG. Paints a very good picture for us right now. Icon having the highest damage. It's no surprise that he was uh, playing so well in the very last team fight. If you were keeping your eyes onto OMG's backline, Crystal and Icon were kiting them out for a year. You could see that Icon finally gets his items paid off. You see in that last fight as well, just on that note, that Kuro had a really big impact. And I thought it was going to turn around for BLG, mm. but meanwhile, OMG were just having their way with the rest of the backline. And Jin Jiao tried so hard to get that positioning. And just couldn't get uh, away from the rest of OMG. And I never thought that I was going to say this, but in laning phase, Sejuani definitely took it over Riven, and late game, Riven took it back against yep. Sejuani. You know, like, what sort of upside-down world is this? Maybe it's because we're Australians casting in China, but the whole point about this composition is the fact that the Q3 did so much uh, work, yeah. and also ADD's ultimate, while it was good in the early game and mid-game, kind of was lackluster late well, game. We saw a couple of picks, saw one on the Crystal, yeah. Hood, yes, saved his 80 carries life, and you could see how they were playing uh, the Sejuani. But then you get to the late game, like you mentioned, and that all-in fight from a Rise, a Riven, a Jarvan, yep. then you have a Zaya Galio. It's like, what does our team do? We go in very, very well. And that is the highlight as well. If you steal the Jarvan ultimate, you don't have AD in order to scale it. If you steal the Zaya ultimate, no AD once again. So very few ultimates were able to be stolen. It's going to sound funny, but I actually really like the Rise ultimate and the Galio ultimate the most, neither of which do damage. So it was nicely countered against Kuro. Yeah, to a part there as well, that Kuro in the last fight, you know, a couple of ultimates used uh, I think I saw the Galio ultimate was the a couple Jarvan. of times, yeah, and yep. the Jarvan ulti as well. So uh, the Disruptor in that play, BLG still, to me, still look great. You know, there was a good portion of that game where I go, BLG rising to the occasion because they missed out on playoffs narrowly to a team like JDG and DMO technically as well. Yeah, I mean, formerly known as Snake. However, coming into this matchup, we see the same... Dragon, but yeah, sorry. Oh. The other I know, there's one. no the, the other one, the there's other so one, the, the other rebrand. The whole point that I'm trying to make is that <laughs> we see the same mistakes coming out. They do so well. You can see that they want to scale because especially with the itemization, you see the Warmogs and you see the uh, Locket as well. You yep. say, wow, this is going to be a frontline Sejuani that never dies. He died. He died in those fights <laughs> and uh, it just did not work out for them. No, it didn't. But I do like the Sejuani top. I like the yeah. innovativeness of both compositions there. That was only game one. It felt like it went for an entire series. And I can't wait to bring you game two right after this short break.牙膏哎呀最后留了一个闪现但是老贼这边很凶猛啊
争夺一下，抢到了，哎、到了后续想开飞飞。但是加料这个闪现要朝我空了，威震没有没有闪现，防守一个大招拉开距离，这个伤害打出太高了。后续鳄鱼的一个进场，韦恩开大，但是这一波不敢再跟了。加料在原地一个金身是要等死的。这波赶紧撤，鳄鱼这边手里有闪现的，反而不跟了。那我觉得京东还是赚的，因为如果你这种十六分多钟你叫到了峡谷先锋，中路外塔如果一定去站好是可以守。这边已经转到内塔去了，绿帽跳出来，一个恐惧恐惧到刀妹的刀妹的。位置刚好走的比较远，刚才从上方过来，老美给了一个大招，以后进来 Q 两下，追到后排，但是他鼻双人没有打到东西，后续进来的 Scout 进场却如摧枯拉朽，第二个 Q Q 上去将绿绿毛人头给收下，后面牙膏进来想要用杰斯力挽狂澜，但是双拳难敌六手。是的。说实在的，走出去会死。你我你,你知道，我也知道呀。这我也知道，京东也知道对方要强攻，选择让船长待在中路上来清清线。哎哎哎！但是塔直接被拆掉了以后，听这时候是被关在黄色大道里面，回身甩出了一个泰坦大，盲僧要上前，盲僧要上前，被一个连调解，我又在地上了，哥了，这个大招直接把五个人全部打在里面，吃到金箍的啊，这样一狙 A P 只要一直给输出，还有剑魔在前方。哎